I also ask if the nudity will come back to the game. Uh, add it again without problems. And that will be a, on a DLC on Steam, for instance. That's one way of doing it. Um, in a DLC. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so you can do a little patch, download. But you only buy the big package. <laughs> <laughs> and you have that option enabled again. Uh, the Necro Dungeon, I mean, the invisible bridge is, is awesome. It's often the case that, that uh, some guild is waiting there as camping, camping the bridge. I mean, I still remember the first fun. time I went there with Henrik, that happened. He wanted to show me the dungeon on stream. And ah. Uh, ah, we, we got okay. ambushed and, and okay. then there's guys on the other side and they're like, look how shit your dungeon is, Henrik, and they're kind of making fun of him. But it was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something that could be improved. Yeah. <laughs> but it, was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something that could be improved. Do you guys want to hear a very bad joke? Bad joke? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Hey, clean, are you high or are you clean? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> To my defense, I said it was a bad one. <laughs> so hello everyone and welcome to the Wolfside channel. Today is a very special topic. <coughs> uh, indeed, special. <laughs> we will look at what Henrik uh, talked with us. Then I will go through the random questions and answers list. But first off, I want to say because a lot of people wrote that in the Twitch chat. Um, yes, I was high. I, I, sp I, I was so nervous to talk with Henrik live on the stream with thousands of people that I that I, that I smoked a little bit too much, I guess. And then I was stoned as as hell. Yeah, and some Alliance members even made this, uh, this meme here, I guess. I don't know who made this, but... Thank you, man. This is awesome. <laughs> but okay, let's start with the serious stuff. We have delivered um, all sprints so far that we have on the roadmap. So obviously we're getting uh, close to adding upcoming sprints finally. Uh, as you know, we have a lot of things on the list to add to the game that we want to, want to add. Um, a lot of great feedback and suggestions from you, the community. Uh, our last patch was um, quite successful when it comes to the Stability of everything, obviously we have the mastery system, uh, dungeons and some different things. And um, things have been moving on the right direction, it's been very exciting for us. The feedback we're getting is really awesome. Uh, also really good feedback on different balance things and uh, things that we may be missing we want to follow up. Uh, currently we're working on the next patch is quite heavily focused on um, polishing and bug fixing. Everything that had been reported, we've gone through that list, collected everything, both art issues in the world, but also obviously... He said bugs, the sound was out at that moment. Fully focusing on. Uh, we've been progressing quite well there as well, so that's really nice to see. Um, <clears throat> so we are um, planning to deploy this next patch quite soon. There's quite a lot of fixes in that one. Uh, we don't have the exact date yet, and again, we don't want to... Put those dates out if we need simply more polishing time and so on. Will you focus more on the quality of life stuff first before you implement the, the next roadmap stuffs, or will it be a parallel process to that? Good question. So, yeah, we obviously, people have been playing for quite a while, recognize some of the issues and bugs that we have in the game, and some of them we had for quite a long time, which obviously is something that we want to get out of the way so we can get a better overall gaming experience with less of that hurdle. A lot of the time people have been asking for, please uh, let us have the search function, etc. on a broker work better. And we fully agree uh, there are some things that will bring a lot of quality life just updating the broker a little bit. So that is absolutely one of the things when it comes to quality of life. A lot of players are asking for more uh, control options, you know, legacy combat option with the di differences. Uh, one, I guess, with the with the in-game voting system, uh, people always ask for. I mean, you could you could make uh, daily votes about everything you have in mind with something or something. If if it's minor decisions, so I don't know what what decisions. Uh, then um, uh, the, the people would, would love that. The community would love that. If you if you would make more votes over over things, would be awesome. And yeah, people just want their voices heard because, like, I mean, most of the stuff I've mentioned already wasn't. These aren't my ideas. It's stuff that I talk to people in game about. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, I mean, there are some games, uh, I think it's RuneScape that does the in-game vote. Yeah, RuneScape does it really well. Yeah, and if they and pass... they randomly select people for voting, too. Yeah, and isn't it if they pass like 70% or something, it's something they are, you know, looking to proceed on or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah they have a really nice system, though. Yeah, and you know, great. We Obviously, we try to look on other games with similar challenges to see how do they improve things and what kind of tools and ways they may use to j just try to make the game better. Um, 
So absolutely, we're going to have in-game voting because this is a good opportunity for that to see. Uh, you know, we like you said, Wolf site, we can throw in small random things just to get a lot of feedback quickly on some small direction changes or updates that mm -hmm. could go a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, every now and then, there's also small things that we didn't expect to be a big thing, but then when it gets added, <laughs> wow, this is a really good change, you know? Yeah. So just for example, the, the Necro Dungeon, I mean, the Invisible Bridge is, is awesome. Um, but but uh, it's often the case that, that uh, some guild is uh, maybe waiting there, especially for players to come into the dungeon and of course camping camping the bridge. I mean, I still remember the first fun. time I went there with Henrik. That happened. He wanted to show me the dungeon on stream. And, ah, ah uh, we we got okay. ambushed, and and okay. then there's guys on the other side, and they're like, look, look how shit your dungeon is, Henrik, and they're kind of making fun of him. But it was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something that could be improved. <laughs> yeah, we you know we have this challenge as well when people are like you said camping inside those specific areas and holding them. In one way, it's quite interesting and unique. A game. I, I mean, imagine yes. someone that really dedicated time. I want to control this dungeon. I, I, I put my investment in this. In one way, it's pr pretty unique and cool. But obviously, in the other way, we can see some of the frustration that, okay, they have it locked down in a silly way. They logged out there, they log in, and so on. And obviously, that's not in intended of how we wanted to play either. Uh, Wolf said, I have a question for you. How do you feel about just how alliances work in Mortal? Uh, this, this is a good one. Um, mm -hmm. I will specify that much better than I did on the stream in the next upcoming videos. Too yeah, good. dude, mounts outside the towns would be great for new players. What? Say again? I didn't hurt. Uh, the, the, um, do, do you bring back the donkeys again? Ah, the donkeys. Yeah. Uh, and the, the mules. <laughs> right. We, we have the donkeys, we have the bull horses that are still missing, right? That we want to add eventually. Um, and yeah, the donkeys was great. So you get stuck mm. in this very harsh V shape. You almost look through the terrain out well. You probably know what I'm talking about. What kind of areas? Yeah, there's there's some areas that look very like polygonal too, mm. uh, and like textures in the river around like the step are. We are far up in the north, and the and the, the cliffs are there. Sometimes when you when you look down, it's like I, I don't know. I, I've seen that in in games in 2004 or something like that. It looks yeah. so so steep and and so clunky. <laughs> and I don't know if that is a PS2 yeah. game when I'm looking at that. And I that, and then I'm turning around and it's like oh high high end polygon whatever stuff. Yeah. And then I'm turning back yeah. down and I'm seeing what what the what the fuck is this? Yeah, <laughs> it's a problem. When we generate the world, uh, we had to build specific tools on how to generate it in Unreal Engine that. Uh, made it efficient because again like we have one main guy that manually crafted the entire world so obviously you can't sit there in one meter distance and mold the world so you had to do like huge brush tools and generation and from above which means it's easy to miss those up close low resolution cracks or erosions that looks awesome from distance but in walk there it's you know like you said nintendo game yeah, right? uh, so we are actually going through those also um, evening them out. It wasn't meant to be a Henrik uh, or Star Wars roasting. I'm pretty sorry, Henrik. It's also when we have a new player and I'm, and I'm s s saying to them s sometimes, uh, Mortal Online, where pigs can fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes, too. sometimes, not always, but sometimes. That, that's one <laughs> annoying bastard that's been there for a long time now, and mm. I'm so sick of it. We have yeah. had a few guys doing rounds on it, trying to identify it. Um, it's one of those really annoying ones that it just it's it's not that straightforward just i mean it seems mm. obvious and clear right how the mm. hell why can't we fix that uh but it's also a chance that if, if we have some of the developers spending days on something and we have too little information and uh, sometimes they become way more complicated and time consuming uh, but it is on the list now that okay it's enough with flying pigs you know and spring box uh, because it's also something if a new player just logs in and look look up in the sky and see a spring buck. so let's move on with the questions and answers list because uh, that is very long so performance will be improved for large scale battles in the unreal engine 5 like it was in the unreal engine 4 legacy combat options will come back also a swing parry on keybind and stuff like that 
Brokers will be improved with much better filters and stuff. Bags in banks and in houses is a problem and the clunkiness will be improved soon. Territory control will get a lot of more buildings and functions, especially the, the relic uh, buildings and stuff like that. Also the breeding grounds. We haven't talked about the mines, but I guess also the mining. Adjustable taxes will come that you can set the, your own taxes in your own village. Leveling pets at the stable will come also with breeding. <laughs> breeding and come in one sentence with... Uh, okay, yeah, for, forget it. Um, when you fight with pets, uh, that the clade XP will get transferred to the pet XP. That your pets can level up faster. This will be a thing. Hendrik also said that the pet balance is very, very difficult in Mortal Online. And to improve that, Hendrik wants to make sure that uh, Beastmasters need more actual player skill to play this class instead of just making auto attacks and uh, the, the thing is doing the rest. Group tasks will come to the game, also maybe group dungeon raids. Points of interests will be improved. The respawn rate there, also the respawn uh, uh, rate of the of the uh, boxes and stuff there, and also the loot in there. What would also be awesome would be, for example, just uh, ju ju just a few random notes uh, in, in some in some random points of interest, and people will maybe fight over a uh, one Gabor note or something like that. I don't know. Multiple entrances and exits will come for the dungeons. Safe spotting is currently allowed, but the AI AI will be improved that safe spotting will not be possible in the future. AI is often standing in your face and um, pe people, especially new players, often making handle hits and when you're going back the AI is following you and standing directly in your face. This will maybe change with the AI improvement. More tasks will come, also much more dungeon related ones and also bigger rewards for the for the higher kills, for the higher for the, for the bosses. Guild banner and guild caves are planned and will come to the game at some point. Books and paintings will come back to the game like it was in the first game where you can publish your own books in the libraries and sell your own painting paintings at the broker for example the invasion system will come like it was in the first game but with major improvements hendrik said the arena will come to tin Rim with group fights ranks pve and also prizes and titles like the champion of the month. Hendrik also talked about the dimension runs where you can sign up with a group and then also other groups can sign up and you can have a more more or less dark and darker gameplay style kind of stuff. Then the combat rework, more to that in the next video. But in general it's about the special moves, the abilities and also for example the bows will have a quick quick shot and also vo volley shot um, to shoot a few more, more arrows and stuff and also fletching will come in the future along with the poison system to also improve archery a little bit in the game but mainly with the special moves of course the close combat with, with uh, axes and stuff like a, like a roundhouse kick or I, I don't know what, what, what they have planned. A lot more magic schools will come over time for example mentalism that you will be able to move a lot faster on the battlefield like tracer from overwatch or something like that there will also be a magic school where you can evolve body parts uh, that you have different body parts then or, or animal parts of your body or I don't know and there will be also a school like harmonism where you can play instruments that can give you buffs or debuffs. The spiritism gameplay is very lame and Henrik promised that they will improve that to make it more fun. Another interesting quality of life change is the priest button that we can then finally see where our home priest is and where the nearest priest is. That would be awesome. The dragon will come one day because a lot of people ask that in the chat because that is why I ask also that, that question. The dragon will come one day with the big titans and these were so so big that we that we will have epic server fights on these monsters. Henrik also talked a little bit about the underdark, the plan for from one and a half years ago. Um, where the whole map of uh, Murland is also tunneled more or less and you have a whole map of Murland under Murland that is also holding TC structures maybe even keeps in the Underdark and stuff like that and is a whole new continent more or less under the current continent and everything is tunneled there and you can travel all around the map on top of the map or in the Underdark. And yeah, Star Wars will implement that but it needs time. Mineable stones and meteor drops and relics will come to the game again like we had in the first game. That brought up a lot of PvP, so this would be an awesome feature. Hendrik also talked about the idea of having a pitch black knight not night but night <laughs> English <laughs> uh, for once a week or maybe once a month or something like that. Please 
please leave your opinion in the comments would be awesome. And please look in the description. There's a vote, especially for the Pitch Black Knights. Lanterns will come that you have hands free in dark dungeons. Thievery will come, but a better balance than in the first game, Henrik promised. The mastery system will be improved with crafting buffs and especially for people who are more interested into professions. Sieging tents will be more usable and less clunky and will be fixed. Haven will be free to play. The annoying flying stuff will be fixed someday. And the second continent will be hosted for example in the US and the third continent will maybe hosted in Australia. And maybe we will have a seamless transition between uh, the two continents. Maybe not. Maybe we'll have just an NPC like like take me to Zaduka and then you have a loading screen and then you are in Zaduka. That could, could also be a thing. But I th at least hope that it's a seamless transition over a bridge would be awesome. And yeah, Nudity will be come back as a DLC. So this was it with the list. So here are also a few uh, more or less outtakes. <laughs> a little hardcore embarrassing for myself, but um, it, it is how it is. It is how it is. To my defense here, at that point, I was tripping like hell. And I was nervous like hell. Um, just just to say something first, Henrik. Um, um, uh, a lot of people of the community have very positive uh, feedback uh, for you, and um, uh, I totally lost the point. Wait a second, I smoked a little bit too much weed today. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this stream summary. So yeah, please share it with all your friends, with all the mortal players you know. Would be awesome, by the way. And please leave a like and subscribe and maybe a comment or something. And I hope, I hope I, I made my job okay in, in, in Hendrik's stream. I, don't, I didn't want to disturb or annoy people. So yeah, but uh, anyway, uh, special thanks to all the supporters, of course. Carmel, Professor O, Paladin Life, Lucari, Ronus, Paternax, Colombo, Lok, Giovanni, Vargas, Real, Metwurst, Cyrus, Mip, Greta, you and all the others, of course. And never forget to make nudity hard, like, uh, make party hard. And yeah, never, never forget to make party hard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, see you all next time. Goodbye.